Hey guys, it's Mike here, and in this video, I'm going to be discussing a question that I've oftentimes received over the years on my channel. This has to do with the Cell Saga, and more particularly with Goku and Vegeta, two rivals and enemies at this point in the story, and the question of what if Goku and Vegeta train together inside of the hyperbolic time chamber leading up to the battle against Cell instead of having Goku and Gohan enter in Vegeta and Trunks. What kind of results would this have yielded? What changes would this have made to the story and to the characters themselves? Well, before I begin, make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe, because all of that will help you, especially if you're new, to be able to make this channel succeed to an even greater level so you can see even more content like this. Watching the entire video also will help you to allow me to do that because it will let this video be more promoted, seen by even more eyes, so that we could ascend to the next level of Saiyan power, going even further beyond. But with that being said, let's get straight into the video. So let's start first off with the mentality of those two fighters going into the chamber. Now, Goku actually went after he woke up from the heart virus and recruited Vegeta to go into the hyperbolic time chamber with Trunks in order for them to train to fight against not only the androids and Cell. Just like Vegeta interpreted and anticipated Goku would be doing this, so too did Goku know that Vegeta would. In that they wanted to surpass the Super Saiyan, the Super Saiyan wall, and the levels of power that they'd encounter at this point in the story. They wanted to go beyond the androids, beyond Cell, because they had been shown their limits, and not just that, but were shown that even after all the training they did in preparation for these machines, for these cyborgs, for these evil creations of Dr. Jiro, they still were not enough as they were. So they decided to go into the room of Spirit in Time, the hyperbolic time chamber, where they could spend a year in a single day. Which uh, could definitely use a lot of other purposes other than, you know, training and shadow boxing and increasing uh, the amount of basic uh, strength that you have in your biceps and triceps that Harold definitely would love. But of course, it's Dragon Ball, so they never use it for any other reason than that. The fact of the matter is that at this point in time, Vegeta made it clear to Goku as to what was going on here. He said, Kakarot, why is it that you brought me along to train here? My ultimate objective is you. You do know that, don't you? So what Vegeta is saying is that he still, at this point, harbors the uh, hatred for Goku, in a sense. He still sees him as disrespecting him, his pride, upsetting his balance of being the true Saiyan supremacy in the universe, and he still wants to defeat him. And as he says numerous times throughout this arc, he intended to kill Goku. So the question is, for him, why would Goku even allow him to train in there? And Goku says, well, he understands understands that, but he knows that he won't be able to beat all of them by himself, and that Vegeta, of course, would also be sensing that. Now, as for why Goku has Trunks go into the chamber with Vegeta, I think a lot of that comes down to two different reasons. Number one is because Vegeta and Trunks are father and son. They're more likely to be able to train together, at least in some sort of capacity, even though we don't really see that happening on screen. A lot of people don't believe that they did, but I feel like there could be some evidence to support it, which maybe I'll get into in its own separate video. But also, I think that Goku knows that having him go in instead of on his own with Trunks would be better for him. And he's kind of trying to help him out by having him connect with his son. So Goku's really doing a good guy thing right there. Additionally, it ties into the other huge component of Goku's plan, which ties into everything with his own son, Gohan, that we could see right next to him. Because after all, Goku goes in with Gohan during this point in the story, and as he talks about, he actually intends for Gohan to not only become a Super Saiyan, just like he was in the future, but also to become more powerful than him. Goku says that he wants to overcome the limitations of his Super Saiyan become stronger than anyone else, which he does, but also the second part, where he wants Gohan to be even stronger than him, who has already become stronger than anyone else also happens because when Goku and Gohan emerge from the chamber they are both mastered Super Saiyans and 
Gohan is the stronger of the two before he even unleashes and unlocks his hidden potential, which I'll get more into soon. Now, with regard to Vegeta and his power, of course, I just said how Goku and Gohan become the two most powerful in the arc, other than Cell at the time. But we see when Vegeta goes into the time chamber with Toronkasu, he ends up becoming way more powerful than Goku, Gohan, and everyone else at the time, including Cell, when he achieved the Grade 2 of Super Saiyan on top of increasing his base form of power with the Super Saiyan form as well, to where he's able to stomp Cell in this form. And he continues to beat him down to the point to where Cell, even at his most powerful, stands no real chance against the power of Vegeta, and Vegeta actually goes on to say that it would be kind of pointless for him to even waste the energy to kill uh, Cell at this point in time. Now, another thing that Vegeta points out right here that you could see is that this guy Trunks is almost as strong as me. Of course, Trunks goes on to show off his grade three and makes the argument of whether or not he's actually stronger than Vegeta, and maybe Vegeta was just, you know, blind to that situation. However, I discussed that more in depth in another video. You could see that in the top right corner. The fact of the matter is, though, that Vegeta and Trunks were a certain level of strength and even that was really nothing compared to the power of Goku. Because we see Goku demonstrate just 50% of his power when he goes with Gohan to visit Korin. And just look at the reactions of everyone on display. This is even more played up in the anime. We have Piccolo sweating and freaking out. We have Vegeta. He's completely speechless. He can't say anything. He's clenching his teeth. He's sweating even more than Piccolo. And, you know, he knows that he doesn't stand a chance even against Goku's 50%, which means that Goku is over over twice as strong as Vegeta, because Vegeta and the others don't know that this is Goku's half. They assume probably this is his most powerful level of power, his maximum. But again, this is way more than Trunks and Vegeta at this point in time. And even after Vegeta enters the time chamber, he's still weaker at his 100% than Goku's, which goes to show you just how much of a big increase Goku got training with Gohan in the chamber. So theoretically, the two of them would have been strong Longer than they had if they had gone into the chamber initially. Uh, with that being said, Vegeta, no doubt, would have been stronger than he was when he emerged and fought against Cell, as we could see right here as his Super Vegeta. And in turn, he probably would have been able to defeat Cell just as easily in terms of uh, pure strength, and so too would Goku. All the characters, when they emerged from their first day in the chamber, could beat Cell. Piccolo, Goku, Vegeta, Gohan, and Mirai Todonkosu are all incapable of being beaten aside from with regard to what we see Cell go on to exploit here, which is the fact that he goads Vegeta into letting him absorb Android 18 because he knows that he would be able to overcome Vegeta if that's the case, and Vegeta is thrilled by the challenge of the battle, which is very much echoing what we saw from Goku on Namek with regard to Frieza. So both these characters would definitely be stronger than when they went initially. However, with regard to that, both of them could very much very likely fall prey to the very same thing that Vegeta does. I know I'm saying very a lot here, guys. Don't take a shot every time I do that. Which is where he allows him to reach his maximum perfect complete Kanzen Cell perfect Cell power and lets him go off and absorb Android 18, which Trunks tries to stop and, uh, you know, Obviously, because Trunks isn't necessarily as dumb as his dad, even though he still is dumb enough to hold back his power and even allow this to be a one-on-one -on -one fight to begin with. But that's more about respect, which is an underlying theme between the two of them throughout the course of this arc, which obviously would be a little bit different with Goku and Vegeta. Although it is quite likely that because the fact that the two of them would be trained together inside of that time chamber, Vegeta wouldn't really have this desire as much to kill and destroy Goku 
as he did before. I mean, after all, the two of them likely would not be able to coexist in reality in terms of training together. Vegeta would be stubborn and maybe very much like he was with Trunks, not wanting to really show off his true power against Goku and maybe vice versa. But the fact of the matter is that Goku and Vegeta would be trapped together in a room essentially for a year. I find it hard to believe that Vegeta would be able to hold out long enough in order to not fight against him, at least in a sparring match. And so over time, it's likely that the two would develop more mutual respect for one another, which Vegeta himself goes on to point out right when Goku is fighting against Perfect Cell, that he is really annoyed about it, but he admired Goku because of the fact that he trained as hard as he could, but could never surpass Kakarot. He's a genius. And fortunately for him, Cell was two steps ahead of him. So naturally, if Vegeta, after training for two days in the chamber, the second one entirely on his own, of course, which probably held him back even more, was not capable of catching up to Goku, that he saw him as being more impressive, the same thing would likely be the case of the two of them trained inside the room together, because he would see all of that first hand with Goku, maybe he would never be able to defeat Goku in a straight up fight when the two of them were together, and even if he did, I assume that might be kind of like a later dynamic in the story where he could have killed Goku when he knocked him out as Majin Vegeta and he didn't, he could have killed him at different points in Dragon Ball Super theoretically, but instead he would grow to respect him more and he's like, well, I defeated Kakarot, that's enough for me, but I'll let him fight and train and get better because of how much of a genius he is. So either that or he would see that Goku still beats him and maybe his pride would be shattered once again like the other times I talked about in a video in the top right corner. But nonetheless, he would grow to respect his rival and enemy at this time and it would probably be even more dulled down like we see later in the story. But either way, the two of them likely could and very much would fall victim to the situation where maybe Vegeta would try and let Cell go free, but Goku would try and stop him much like Trunks did, the two of them would fight, and either way, Cell would become perfect. At which point, Cell would obviously be stronger than both of them, especially because the thing I'm going to get into soon, which is a huge factor in regard to everything with regard to this situation. And thus, Cell probably would do the same thing that he did right here with Trunks, where he had Trunks defeated because of his own weakness, which I also will get into momentarily. There's a lot of things to talk about and cover here, and then in turn decide to put on a tournament where he would pit Goku, Trunks, Vegeta, and Gohan all together against him. Now, in terms of that, this is what would lead into the Cell games where things would be a lot different because the fact of the matter is that every single character here would in fact be weaker than they were leading into this. Now, why do I say that? Well, a lot of this comes down to one simple reason, because of Gohan and the fact that Goku purposely trained with him. And that isn't just because the fact that Gohan was his son and that he wanted to bond with his son for a year or anything like that, or that he just wanted to have the next generation carry on his legacy. No, he actually knows that Gohan will serve as the absolute best strategy for him to win against Cell. And not just that, but also to make Goku stronger in the process. Look what he says right here. He said that he wants to become stronger than anyone and he wants Gohan to become stronger than him. This isn't that Goku just wants to make sure to hold back in his train to make it so Gohan has a chance to win as a lot of Goku fans seem to believe. No, instead, he says right here that Gohan will be able to be a very strong training partner. Because at first, maybe he would slightly hold Goku back because he wasn't a Super Saiyan, but after that, he would become a huge factor in terms of Goku's strength, because as I talked about more in depth in a video, which I talked about how Gohan made Goku stronger in the top right corner, the fact of the matter is that Goku actually was constantly fighting against the power of Gohan, which was escalating at a significant rate. And so after Gohan Gohan became a Super Saiyan, he was constantly growing at an exponential rate in power and pushing Goku to his limits and beyond at a constant rate during the course they're training inside that time chamber. Goku is even shocked when he sees Gohan just kind of uh, shadow boxing in the air, and he says right here, wow, he's really grown so much in just a short amount of time.
time too. He knows just how significant the power is of Gohan on display. And this is something he points out specifically after he gives up in the fight against Cell, where he says that Gohan is stronger than he can even imagine, and that when he was in the room of spirit and time, he started to awaken a great power within him. And Goku experienced that firsthand because the fact that not only in the anime version did he actually see Gohan become a Super Saiyan 2 uh, just very briefly for an instant before he did when he fought against Cell at the end of a really intense sparring session where Goku actually called the whole thing off because of just how much of a fight Gohan was bringing to him and they had kind of reached their limits at that point. But we also get little indicators that point this out along the way as well. Like for example, after Goku goes to his 50% of power in front of Korin, Gohan is surprised because he's saying, well, Dad, must be holding back. This can't be 50% of his power. Goku also asks Gohan after the fight against Cell if he ever had any time or trouble keeping up with them during the fight, and he says he didn't think that either of them was going all out, and so he didn't really seem that impressed by their power. But Goku, on the other hand, actually was fighting as hard as he could, and it still wasn't enough. So Gohan significantly pushed Goku to his limits, to where he got as strong as he did because he was fighting with someone who was escalating much faster than Goku and eventually surpassed him before he even taps into his own hidden potential, which is then backed up after Gohan powers up against Cell. In the anime, we see even more people confirming this, but in the manga, it's straight up said by Cell right here that perhaps there was some truth after all in what Goku was saying. So even though Goku and Vegeta would be far more powerful than they were when they initially went in together as Super Saiyans, with Vegeta being a little bit stronger than Goku at the time, the fact of the matter is that when they exited, they wouldn't be on the level of Gohan and Goku after they exited from their first time. Even if Goku and Vegeta went back into the chamber again, it still wouldn't be enough. However, they would still likely have mastered Super Saiyan, at least Goku would, during that first time in the chamber. Because we saw this perfectly contrasted for us with regard to the philosophy and the training of Goku, as well as Vegeta and Trunks, when we saw Trunks going up to fight against Cell in his bulked up grade 3 form, where he wasn't able to do anything to Cell, even land any punches, even though Cell says right here that his strength is greater than that of perfect Cells. And this is something that we see that Goku is able to figure out as well along the way, where he achieves the exact same forms in his training through the meditation, the other training he was doing, that Trunks and Vegeta did. However, despite that, we see that Goku, before even leaving the chamber, realizes the problems with these forms. With regard to the bulked up grade 3, uh, he realizes that it would make him slower and uses far too much stamina, and so he wouldn't really stand a chance against Cell as his perfect form, even if he was physically stronger. The same thing is, too, that Goku realizes that even that uh, initial Super Vegeta Grade 2 likely also uh, uses up too much stamina, which is why he says that he and Gohan need to master the initial Super Saiyan, the basic form, so to speak, and just stay in it all the time. So this is likely that Goku would have figured out the same thing training with Vegeta, and so the two of them would have exited the chamber as mastered Super Saiyans, but still, nonetheless, neither of them would be as powerful as Goku and Gohan were here, even if they went back into the chamber again. Because after this, Goku revealed that going into the chamber again wouldn't really be that beneficial to him, and I also explained that even more in depth in a video you could see in the top right corner, unless I ran out of cards, and then you could see it down below in the description or just on my channel if I don't remember to put it there. So with all that being said, Goku knew that Gohan was the only one that would be able to ultimately defeat Cell in the end and become the true hero, the victor, when everything was said and done, and thus, as a result, it wouldn't have worked out this way if he and Vegeta trained together. They might have gone with a different strategy. Both of them might have been able to do a little bit better uh, than Vegeta did against Perfect Cell, for example, when he fought him the first time. But nonetheless, they would both be defeated. Cell was still really strong after his first fight against Goku, where he did everything he could to beat him. It still wasn't enough. And so, even if Gohan went with Trunks, he never would have achieved the same levels of power that 
Goku and Gohan win together either, because the fact of the matter is that Trunks, as I had just showed before, was also obsessed with these forms and basically achieved them on his own uh, inside of the time chamber, maybe with a little bit of guidance from Vegeta, as we could see in that one flashback in Super. And so maybe Gohan would be like a bulky, you know, three foot tall version of himself that looked kind of like this, uh, like, you know, Franco Columbo or something like that but then he would just be going in the wrong direction, whereas Goku and Vegeta would be going in the right one, and none of them together would be able to stand a chance of defeating Cell and winning in the end. Which means everybody dies and so goes on and do whatever he wants, except for, you know, if he runs into Broly or somebody else along the way that will, you know, kill him. Or just straight up erase him if Zeno gets bored. But okay, guys, this has been my breakdown of what I believe would happen if Goku and Vegeta train together. In the end, it simply wouldn't be enough for them to overcome perfect Cell, let alone super perfect if he found a way to kind of replicate the same situation. And knowing Goku and Vegeta, they probably would have let Cell become his perfect self, even if if that meant that they had to fight each other once again just to be able to unleash that power within Cell, which then would lead to their own demises. Because this time, well, it's unlikely that Gohan's uh, power on top of his train with Trunks, if he even did that, would be enough to overcome. But what do you guys think? Let me know your own thoughts down below in the comments. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and stick around, because there's a lot more to come in the future. Yeah, and you better subscribe.